Next weekend, Madonna's concert and the grand production of the show that will take place on Copacabana Beach in Rio de Janeiro are set to be something rarely seen in the music world, as the government and the city hall together invested nearly $5 million of public spending. The problem is that behind all this investment, all the technology and special effects, the presentation by the American pop singer is also expected to serve as a stage for elements linked to the occult. It's no surprise to anyone that Madonna is one of the artistic figures in pop music who has shown the most disrespect towards Jesus and the Christian faith since the beginning of her career in the early 1980s. For example, she was one of the first artists to use the cross, a symbol of Christianity, in necklaces and earrings as fashion items. Furthermore, her music videos and concerts have always mixed choreographies with religious figures and erotic symbolism in a clear provocation to the name and sanctity of God. But in recent years, the singer has made her connection to occult-related religions even clearer, even posting images of herself performing mystical rituals on her social media. Additionally, those who attend her concerts notice that they are increasingly filled with references to elements of witchcraft, Kabbalah, and even satanic symbols. And in this video, I'm going to show you that, beyond all this structure and the spectacle that will happen in Rio de Janeiro, there's a smokescreen for something spiritual that Satan is doing within pop music, through other singers as well. You'll discover that there's something even darker about this style of music that few people are noticing. Like I told y'all earlier, you motherfuckers have entered the rapture. And if ain't nobody flying up to heaven right now, obviously all y'all motherfuckers going to hell. Right with me. So... And before we begin, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel here. It's very easy. It doesn't cost anything. Just click on the subscribe button, and next to it, there will be a bell icon. Click on that bell icon too, and select the all option so you don't miss any video I upload. So let's get started. You might already know that pop music causes some feelings of well-being and pleasure in our brains due to its intentionally repetitive beat. The hits that have topped the charts in the top 10 have been those that follow this model of generating a sense of pleasure and joy in people. But on the other hand, not everything that glitters is gold. And this dark side is not only fueled by sensual and profane music, but there's something behind the scenes that the general public doesn't see. It's no wonder that pop music often carries themes of wickedness and sin in its lyrics. But in this video, we won't focus on the sensual lyrics of the pop market, nor on subliminal symbolism like the all-seeing eye present in music videos, nor on references to the devil. Today, we'll talk about the deeper side of the music industry, which seems subtle and often goes unnoticed. You may have noticed that most female pop singers, when they enter this market, undergo significant changes in their way of dressing and even speaking. Some of them even start with a sweet and romantic image, showing vulnerability and even naivety. But have you ever wondered why they transform over the course of their careers? The pop industry doesn't seem to be so kind to those singers who make their pact with it. This market demands that its contracted artists lose their sweetness and fragility, all as part of the plan, because the initial idea isn't just to make them sensual, but rather to shock the entire audience with a new persona, that is, the new identity of the pop singer that will be revealed to everyone. The strategies used for this range from the classic example of filming a music video showing their new persona, as Taylor Swift and Miley Cyrus did, to even the example of Katy Perry when she cut her hair to launch her new era. And the other pop singers follow this legacy between deconstruction and rebirth, with exotic recordings, provocative clothing, new names, new hairstyles, and even tattoos indicating a reset. This makes me reflect on something, that the closer a singer gets to what the industry demands, the further away from God they become. The more provocative this new character is, the further away they also get from the tastes of their audience. And so, their audience ends up having two options. Either they stop following, or they start to love this new character even more. Notice that the change demanded by the industry to ensure success causes the pop singer to change drastically. It's a true domino effect, one abyss calling out to another abyss. Thousands and thousands of followers become similar to those they admire. It's not just about producing and selling, but influencing. Whether it's a new rhythm, a new appearance, or even a new lifestyle, and everyone is being shaped into the new standard. They call this the new era. But still talking about pop singers, now comes a question. 
Are they closer to what they truly are? Or are they further away from their true selves to ensure their success in the music industry? We're not here to judge, but to warn. If none of these pop singers have been able to stay in this industry without going through this process of depersonalization, why believe that it seems good? In the last century, the physician and creator of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud, stated that this process of losing one's identity in the name of an industry happens when the person feels that their personality is divided. To explain further what he meant, it implies that when a person feels that their true identity is torn between two paths, they end up creating a new identity so as not to lose anything. And that's exactly what happens in the minds of most pop music singers. Trying not to lose, they end up losing nonetheless. But another significant question that made me ponder all of this is, who is behind orchestrating the steps of this industry? Are they the big controllers of the occult world, or the billionaires who receive a flood of dollars with every hit released? If there is a spiritual operation behind this industry, we already know. That demons feed on sin and the occult, we also already know. We're tired of knowing that the spiritual world governs the physical world, and that many of the beats of these songs are consecrated to demons. Many pop singers have claimed to have sold their souls to the devil, or have even incited it. Whether they've sold their souls or not, one thing is certain. Those who follow Satan don't need to have the appearance of a devil, they just need to follow him. And we also know that it's precisely because of the carnal lyrics of these songs that crowds continue to be fed with every click. In other words, any music made here on earth that contains sensuality and occultism combined with a catchy beat stimulating our neurons, opens portals to hell and allows demons to influence their lives. It's a true network of influence. But the question I asked was about who is behind this great industry, right? Despite the prominent occultists who are constantly involved in the production and propagation of pop music, if it weren't for the desire that singers have to be someone beyond what they are, this industry wouldn't have survived even its first decade. Pop singers contracted by the pop world are increasingly abandoning their true identities and following a pattern that sells very well. But this can only happen if pop stars renounce their own identities to follow the world. That is, the pop world. Do you remember a man in the Bible named Samson? He was a man consecrated to God from birth, and he had a covenant with God, which was not to cut his hair. Samson threw this vow, let his hair grow and braided it. And through this covenant with the Lord, he received strength to defeat the Philistines and dedicated his life to doing God's work. Until one day, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah. This woman seduced him and managed to find out where his strength came from, which was the vow he had made with God. So she had a plan, and that plan was to cut Samson's hair and deliver him unarmed to the Philistines in exchange for silver coins. After several attempts, Delilah finally managed to execute her plan. On one of those nights, she managed to get help to cut Samson's hair and handed him over to the Philistines, finally obtaining her silver coins. And if you look at this story, you'll see the life of someone who traded his identity as a man of God. Samson negotiated his Nazarite vow for the passions of the flesh. He traded his true identity to do what Delilah truly wanted. And notice that I'm drawing a parallel between the life of Samson and the lives of many pop segment singers. I'm also comparing Delilah to the pop music industry. Just as Delilah had a good appearance, seduced and stimulated Samson's neurons, so too is the pop music industry. And just as Samson didn't know the hidden side of Delilah, those who make a pact with the industry will see that to stay at the top of the charts, they'll have to eventually give away the secret of their great strength. What I mean is that to be reborn in the pop market, these singers will have to renounce their precious treasure, that is, their own personality. And we have other examples in the scriptures of men who abandoned their true identities because they were torn between two paths, to follow God or to receive fame and applause. Solomon, the son of David, was one of those people. King Saul was another who denied God and also began to follow the occult. The great truth is, that it's not worth gaining the whole world and losing your soul to the devil. It's not worth achieving fame and applause in exchange for selling your soul to the enemy. And when I say selling your soul to the devil, I'm not referring to making satanic pacts, 
but rather handing over your soul as a bargaining chip for fame and likes, and having your power of influence taken for evil. Brothers and sisters, we are the generation of influencers, and we choose how we will influence and who will influence us. In this case, we can turn to the example of David, a man who had a heart after God's own heart, and who despite his mistakes, did everything to please the Lord, even if it cost him his own reputation. David loved God with all his heart, and cherished his presence. And another great influencer of good that we can mention here is the example of Jesus himself. The word of God says that he didn't concern himself so much with being God, but that he chose to empty himself of his glory to win souls through his good influence. And that should be our goal. That's the secret to not falling into the songs of Delilah's industry. It's to strive to be like Jesus who was meek and humble, not clinging to the self, but doing what he himself taught, renouncing his own will to do the will of the Father. Brothers and sisters, pop music is in the ears of people all over the world. The pop market continues to earn billions every year with its sensual songs and catchy beats, turning its contracted artists into avatars of the new era that promote Babylonian culture and all its occultism with subliminal images and symbols. To continue gaining in this environment, it will be necessary to make a sacrifice, to abandon one's own personality for the birth of a new one, thus giving rise to a new character empty of self, yet full of popularity. It would be good if all this deconstruction weren't necessary, but to continue in the market, it will be necessary to say, as Taylor Swift said, my old self is no longer here. But brothers and sisters in Christ, we don't need to follow the example of many, but we must follow the example of Christ Jesus himself, who, even though he was king, even though he had all power, even though he was God, did not consider it something to cling to. But he influenced with love and grace, raising a sea of influencers who are now spread everywhere, influencing this generation to live in holiness and walk like David, thirsting and hungering for the presence of the Lord, seeking to please him, even if it requires denying the desires of the flesh, to live out the will of the Father, which is good perfect, and pleasing. Amen? I hope this video has spoken to you, so like, share with your friends and family, and I'll see you in the next video. May God bless you powerfully. A big hug.